Okay, so good afternoon, guys. Uh, welcome to Usap Pinoy, Kaubini Goyo, and we're here together with uh, uh, one of the greatest athletes, fil greatest Filipino athletes, uh, Mr. Paeng ng Pomoseno. Paeng, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And uh, and it's a pleasure to have you oh, with us. My pleasure, Goyo. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. So, Paeng ng Pomoseno is um, around the world known as one of the greatest bowlers. He's the only person to win a world championship, bowling world championship in three decades, correct? Three decades, that's only, yes. you're the only guy who was able to do that. And the first one you won was when you were 19 years old, was that correct? Am I correct? Correct, uh, 1976, I won my first bowling world cup in Tehran, Iran at 19 years old. Wow, how how wait how did you how did you start how did you start bowling? I mean, say, what got you into bowling? You know, I started by accident. You know, golf was our family sport. We were up in Baguio, Camp Chane, and on the thirteenth hole, right beside it, um, was a bowling center. Because how did I discover oh. the bowling center? It started to rain hard. And then um, we looked for a shelter. It turned out to be the Mile High Bowling Center. Maybe the younger generation okay. are not familiar with Camp Chane, but Camp Chane is um, the place where, was the place where American ser servicemen um, did their recreation at the golf course. And um, one of those was a bowling alley, bowling center. So if not for the rain, um, I would have not discovered it because we were not able to push through with our golf. And um, I asked my dad, can, can we try bowling? So how, that's how I started. If not for the rain, I would have not been a bowler, I think. Grabe, no? It's like fate talaga na, fate talaga na how you got into bowling, right? And how old yeah, were you then, at that time? I was 12 years old. And then I wow. asked my dad when we came down from Baguio to Manila to enroll me in a junior league. And Corona Adolence at that time had a junior program. And I enjoyed it because it was um, a league wherein I played with my age group. It's a golf casino at that time. It's hard to get my age group. Puro matatanda kalaro ko. My dad, my okay. brother. And in bowling, there was an organized youth bowling. So that's how I liked it. And you got, you were hooked now. Since then, you were hooked. And you've been After playing that, bowling. I noticed that I was a better bowler than a golfer. After two <laughs> years, I became the best in the youth. And then okay. uh, from then on, I, I had a goal-setting ladder. After wanting to be the best youth in the country, I wanted to be the best, the best even among adults, which I achieved when I was um, 17, five years later. I won the Philippine Open, youngest ever also, up to now. Wow. Until you, and that record still stands until now, right? You're, you now, are until now the hold, youngest. I hold, two records. I hold the two records for the Philippine Open, youngest at 17 and oldest um, Philippine Open champion. I won it in 2011, 54. So you're the youngest and the oldest so at the same time. <laughs> so how did, okay, your first yeah. world championship was in Iran. My, how did, my Guinness world record is the youngest ever world champion and I established it in 1976. So that record is 40 something years now. Um, unbroken. I have three unbroken Guinness World Records. I think you can but, see some of the circuits. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. that's it. And they just awarded you a new record this year, right? Just a few months ago, correct? Well, I, last month, um, I was honored for the fourth time by the Guinness Book of World Records because I beat my own record, which I established in 2007 for the most bowling titles. Um, at that time, 
I established the record by winning 118 titles. And last year I won a tournament and um, Guinness Book of World Records updated and they notified me that I broke my own record, which is now 133 um, bowling titles, which I won um, all over the world. Galing, no? So the first, the first world title you won, you were you were 19. How did it feel? You know, you're you're competing against the best bowlers in the world who were, I assume, much older than you. So was, I'm sure you were. In oh. It was my first uh, exposure to the world level, and uh, of course, um, I was nervous and. My goal was just to give my best, then bahala na. Um, I remember um, I was fresh from college, um, fresh from high school, first year college at the time. So yes, I was um, a teenager, and um, I just give my best. I trained for it very hard, and. Um, I was happy to have put um, the Philippines in the world bowling map with that win. Okay, but normally, di ba, sa competitions, may mga, there are people who try to intimidate you by trash talking na, hey, bata ka pa, you're not going to win. How did, how did you cope with that na you're, you were competing against veterans of the sport and here you are, a 19-year-old from the Philippines. You must have had nerves of steel, di ba? It was um, good that I had my dad as a coach and he helped me a lot in the mental game. He, he always talked to me how to um, make, um, be determined and let um, nothing affect you. And he always um, taught me how to be um, focused and without anything but bothering you because um, as you well know bowling is a mental sport and mental game yes, yes. and yes um, at, at an early age I knew that um, in any sport there are two things being involved the actual playing of the sport and two how you manage your mental game, how you um, adapt to pressures, how to control it, how especially the nerves. Actually, in yes. all sports, not only in bowling, the number one opponent is your nerves. Once you get nervous, that's it. You're not Wala na, no? relaxed. You try too hard. You lose your composure when things don't go your way. I've learned that all throughout my experience. Because I think if you look at my bowling style, my main forte is the mental game. There are a lot, there are a lot more, of better than, styles oh. than me, I know that. But more than the more than just the physical, the mental game is very, very important. Like you said, you know, it, it takes a lot to deal with the stress, the right? And you have to be ready for it, right? Yes. Um, there's what you call mental preparation. You visualize as what you want your day to go and um, you make game plans. What will I do if I face with this scenario? What are my plans? And then um, I try to psych myself to stay as relaxed as possible, especially in game time. Those, those are the things that um, I worked on all throughout these years. Okay, so you, you mentioned earlier that your record, Guinness Book, Book of World Records, is both as the youngest player who won, won the world championship and the oldest. So that begs the question, how do you keep yourself no, motivated? Uh, to, to, the other oh, record sorry. is the most titles. The most titles, sorry. The most titles. The, the sorry. second Guinness World Record um, is for winning World Cups in different decades. Different decades, okay. But how... Do, so you've been... You've been playing, you've been bowling for decades now. How do you keep yourself motivated? Parang, yeah, it's kasi a lot... actually what 
my fourth record, it's like an icing on the cake. You know, Goyo, I started exactly in 1970. It's 2020 now, so 50 years later, <laughs> I'm still here. Wow. Uh, as Chino Trinidad said in one of my interviews, paano mo ginagawa yan? Lahat ng counterpart mo, masaya na sa rocking chair na lang. <laughs> exactly. You know, Chino has a couple of pictures. I could, I, medyo, I, I, I had difficulty uploading it to the screen, no? but he had a lot of pictures, a number of pictures he sent me. And those are really old pictures. And it, it made me, it made me wonder how how do you how do you keep yourself motivated? You know, you when you wake up, you you want to bowl again, diba? Right? Like yes. I asked that, but it's difficult. Goyo, I'm one of the I'm not making yaban, but I'm one of the first athletes in the Philippines that believed in cross training. I was one of the first athletes that believed in doing weights for strength, muscle strength. I was one of the earliest athletes in the Philippines that believed in building up your stamina. And I did that through running and cycling. So um, I could say that I had an all year round physical fitness program. And I believe that those activities would help in, in my sport. Now, you can see that golf has its own strength and conditioning, bowling has its own. Tennis has its own, but early in the 70s, I had all of those na. I did all of those. Because they would say, oh, weights would stiffen your muscles. Don't do that. I believed otherwise. I did and that stretching. Was, oh. And that's trailblazing because Tamaka before, once you're in that sport, you stick with the sport. You don't join other sports because yes. you want to focus on the sport you're you're in, right? Yeah, I think I, I could say that that's one of my secrets. Um, well, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> it's not um, a secret now. Cross training. <laughs> oh, but cross training. Even up to now, I think... I'm still the same weight as when I was in high school, Goyo. Wow. Yeah. Your weight now is, okay, that's... Look at um, videos of myself when I was 19, then compare now for us. Yeah, I saw the pictures. A lot, a lot of, a lot of us will say, uh, "Are we before as compared to now?" Uh, okay, uh, no next question. <laughs> That's the proof okay. of my all year round um, no off season regimen. I don't have an off season. And that takes, and that takes a lot of discipline. I mean, say it discipline, takes a lot of mental. Of course, I like doing it. Yeah, it's easier yeah. to do things if you enjoy what you do. Tama, tama. Okay, you mentioned one of the things you do for cross training is cycling. And as a cyclist, yes. uh, many wonder. In, so, ha, si pa in, so, de po po sayo, nagbo bike yan? So, you've been biking matagal na? Yes. Uh, I started early 80s. I started with a road bike, and then I even was. I was cycling even way before mountain bikes were invented. And yeah, okay. Why did I go cycling? In, in bowling, legs is important, eh? leg strength. So okay. cycling is a great source uh... of um, a way to strengthen your legs. And then stamina. Your bowling balls are 15 to 16 pounds, what we use. You have to okay. release that 100 times a day. So you need stamina for that. So two yeah. things that cycling helped me, stamina and legs. Um, you, they gave me strong legs. And then I okay. enjoyed it. I collected even certificates, mga finishers. I think I have one. Oh, here. wait, you have here. you have there? Look, oh. I finished. Wow. In the 890s, yata ito, um, na, Luneta to Nasugbo, 100 kilometers. Wow. When, and before, layo pa yun, di ba? When before, um, they would allow bicycles in coastal. Okay. And then you go climb up Tagaytay, palas in the sky. I collected the certificates. And then I like duathlon, running, cycling bike. 
I did it for really? to help my bowling. And of course, I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, but and okay, so let's talk about your bikes. What are your memorable bikes you you had before or, and you still have now, diba? So, well, what are in your the early 80s? Um, I I enjoy collecting. I used to enjoy collecting loved steel race bike road bikes. Those yes. that okay. were handcrafted old style by um, artisan frame builders. Yes, yes. I used to like those guys okay. because yeah. you could they would they, they would file the what you call the logs and make it smooth. Yes. Um, I was into collecting those bicycles, but I disposed of them one by one because I'm not really a collector. Once I don't really get to use them, I sell them. So now I'm limited to, well, I have two good bikes. One is a uh, vanilla by, uh, what's the name In of Portland. the guy who made the... the Sasha yes. White, Sasha White, uh, Sasha White, right? Sasha White, yeah. Yeah. That one, to have one made by him, you have to wait years. I think he even stopped accepting orders. Yeah. Now. Five years, then now he stopped accepting. So, because of the demand, right? Yeah, okay. So, I have his bike and I have kept it ever since. The other one I have is a 29er. It's made by okay. Castellano, also custom built. My bike has to be custom built because I'm tall. And then I have long yes. reach because of my bowling. Yeah. <laughs> Castellano used to be the welder of Ibis. He used to make yeah. um, what he is called Mr. Pivotless for those that are yeah. watching yeah. now who are bikers and who are your friends, Goyo. Mr. John Castellano is called Mr. Pivotless because he designed a very first, it's what was called bow tie, which I think you yes. have one, the original the bow tie. ones. Yes. yes. It has no the pivots, ones. but it has rear shocks and it travels by one and a half inch long in the rear, but the real effect of that is about five inch suspension. I yes. have his bike. That's my favorite um, bike now. Um, it does it all, and that's a that's a that's a engineering wonder a because twenty niner, yeah, and titanium, so it should last a lifetime. It should, it should, so, and oh, that's custom for you. Inherit, my son will just <laughs> inherit it. My favorite pastimes is with my son now, but although now the 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 trail is still closed, we would go to Heroes Trail in Makati. And that's that's a nice trail. That's our favorite okay. trail. You also had a bike, if I'm not rem if I if I'm not mistaken, you had a bike made by a guy who makes who made the same bike for um, Eddie Merckx. Merck. Eddie Merckx yes. is known as the cannibal. He has won the Tour de France about nine times in the seventies up to eighties. Um, for those. Um, familiar with cycling, there are what you call Eddie Merck's frames, Deva. Yes. One who made the frames of, or the bicycles of Eddie Merck's, what's a name called? Confente, Mario Confente. And I was able to buy it in San Diego because when um, he set up he used to, oh, by the way, um, Mario Confetta used to work before Eddie Merckx with Masi. And he set up oh, yes, his Masi. own custom build shop in Car Carlsbad, California. That's off okay. uh, San Diego. I was able to buy a sample frame from him, which was nobody would buy at that time because it was big. Um, yes. Eddie Merckx was 6'2", so Kasaisko, I had that. It's uh, Timing, no? for those my elite cycling. You Google uh, Mario Confente and then Italian Cycling Journal. Type my name. 
um, it will come out. For a while, the family of Confete wanted to buy back the bike from me. Wow. As a soldier. And you, you, yeah. and you, you eventually sold it. Was it only, only 11 of those were made. My God, that's that's so that's rare. That's uber rare, right? Especially yeah. this day. <laughs> that's rare, sobra. Yeah, it was a track bike. So when I bought it, it had a hole in the front, so meaning it could be used as a fixed gear. Okay. Um, so for a while, I was using it as a fixed gear. And wait, and then fix, I also fix had, had or, uh, yeah, fix, fix, yeah. It's hard to pedal. Uh, it's it got one break. But yeah, okay. it had top of the line Campagnolo parts. Okay. And then I had for those cyclists again, Richard Sachs, one of the artisans after Confederate yes, that made custom built steel frame. Yeah. I had his number six frame, the sixth ever frame that he wow. made now you cannot even buy you cannot him. cannot you anymore the first generation campagnolo you cannot anymore campagnolo novo record that the uh, top of the line um, road bike group at that time in the uh, late 60s so, so that's you're, my oh. passion for cycling i i like riding unusual um steel bikes that were lovingly made and with art. You had a folding bike. You had, had a, you had a really nice folding bike, I remember. Yeah, for a while, um, you know, I was based in the States. My son studied there. Um, I would visit him to save on um, airline charges. I bought a folding bike, it was made by um, Moulton. And yes. Moulton was the designer of the Mini Cooper shocks. So this bike was a, what you call a, it was not a folding bike, it's what you call a separable bike because um, it hugs with, through with the pin and then um, it can fit a normal luggage. And it was unusual. Moulton bikes are softly um, after in England. It was made in England. It's hard. It's hard to get it's that a, It's hard. It's a, it's a, what you call a small bike or a mini bike, 20 inch wheels, but it was as fast as riding a normal road bike. Okay. And wait, 20, 20 inch wheels so on you would look really small because you're 6'1. Yeah. Huh? You, you, a 20 inch wheel bike, would you would look, <laughs> yeah, but a 20 inch wheel bicycle on you would look even really small because you're so tall. You're six one, right? So, yes, but you used it, right? It, so, it works um, and it was, it was custom built for me. Ah, it was, yeah, it's it not was off the for a while. That was my. For a while, that was my road bike. Wow. And I liked it a lot. Come so on. I don't really collect once. I am I don't really use it. I'd rather well, then, let the others enjoy it. Tama, tama. But because I like to personally oh. maintain my bike. So if I see it, I don't have time to maintain and you know. Because when I go to your bike shop, you can see that I go there myself. I, yes. I like to be handsome with my bicycle. Yeah, but not now anymore because quarantine. But before, Diva, I'd see you there. Diva, you, you bring your bike and you, you're concerned. And you have a really nice hub set and headset on your Castellano. That was a one-off with, okay. uh, with accents, right? That one... That was inspired by the 70s wherein they pantograph the parts. So my okay. East King hubs, headsets were all pantographed with nice engraving. And you hardly see that. And it came with a bike. And um, people that 
used to bike in the 70s, yung mga Colnago, and you could see pantograph yes. parts. That, that's the how 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 it was inspired by Castellan. And but the new the new cyclists don't know this, eh? but it's it's good to discuss the these things because these are yeah, things it's that it's like they, yeah. they engraved it all around it. Nice. Nice. Okay, so uh, going mean, back, uh, so costly. going back, uh, you would use cycling to cross train for bowling. I noticed at the back, on your left, there is a poster of, I think that's you, uh, you and uh, Manny Pacquiao and Wata Reyes on your left. I think that's okay. a book, right? And, that that um, one. Actually, I have the book. It's a yearbook. That was launched in January 2020. Um, it's the Philippine Yearbook, and it's the first time in 83 years that they featured sports in the yearbook. And they chose, wow. of course, Man Pacquiao, there's Lidia de Vega, there's Heidi Lin of weightlifting, and myself in the you're, you're in the middle of the Philippine. So they chose 50 greatest athletes of the century um, featured in this um, Philippine yearbook. And Galinga. that is Gal Galinga. So, you. Peng, yeah. oh, you've been, and throughout your, your, your profession or your career, you've been recognized by practically all presidents, starting from President Marcos. You've been, Marcos. you've been awarded um, Hello. Here's the one of my. It's the Presidential Medal of Merit. It's the highest award that can be given to a civilian. And this is yes. Tori Aquino. And okay. Arab, um, it's called the Legion of Honor. And, and here's um, it's a, here's the an highest award. And, and may. may... May note pa siya, di ba? Si President Estrada has a note. And President Ramos has a note All of them it. have signed. All Marcos of them? signed oh, okay. one. Arab signed it. And then wow. FDR signed it. Corey signed it. Gloria Macabag Arroyo. Um, it's called, uh, the award was called the uh, Order of La Candula, Champion yes. for Life. So these are my Galing. presidential awards. And then I have a rare poster of Pacquiao, Paeng, Efren, Bata, Reyes. Oh, this is the awesome. Legion of Honor. Yes. And then my Guinness record. Yes. And then this is my makeshift gym. Well, um, on lockdown in my trophy room. I yes. can do all body parts with these dumbbells. And then my World so Cup, mga athlete of the year. So Damn. basically and this wait, is my this, trophy room. And these are not all your trophies, right? You have other trophies, but it's it's stored in another room because oh, no. there's not, not enough space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's I not was. enough space. She's complaining hard to clean the trophies now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, say, you had, you won 133 tournaments. So that's, that's a lot of trophies. That's a lot of trophies. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, if you were to, oh, go ahead. I have plenty second placers, which are in another warehouse. Wow. So that's a, that's a lot. I say, and all those 133 are first placers. Marami pa mga second place, di ba? So, wow. That's, that's, I, I can imagine this, I can imagine your storage room concerns. Hello, uh, Peng. Yeah, um, we're good. I can I can see you. 
playing. There, I can see you. Okay, do you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can see you, and I can hear you. So, um, there's a lot of cyclists now who who are watching. Can you uh, hear me? There's a, yep, we can. We can hear you. Playing. Still there? We lost Peng. Peng, are you still there? Okay. Peng, there. We see you. We, we see you. Okay. okay. Yeah. The uh, internet connectivity in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot. That. There's. Yeah. There's a number of Filipinos who are new in the sport of cycling and bowling. If they were to approach you, what would what advice would you give them? Hey, I'm 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 new in the sport of bowling. What what could you give them as tips to to help them on their journey in the world of bowling? Well, uh, the advice that I can give them is nobody's born a champion. Um, you have to work hard at it. There's a lot of sacrifices involved. And like me, I, was, I started as a kid. I had to manage my time. And my dad always told me that never to neglect my studies because you can't be an athlete forever. So education is very important. But if you want to get in sports, which I highly encourage, sports, make you a better person. It teaches you being punctual, it teaches you being disciplined of the mind and body, because without discipline, you won't be able to become a champion. Um, takes a lot of discipline. I didn't do parties when I was young, Mahira. So you had to make sacrifices and then devote um, hours of training for Tanteon. So those is our, um, what I advise to the youth if they're getting sports. Give your best, enjoy what you do, because if you enjoy what you do, you'll become better at it faster. And okay, so for example, there's... Uh, to do sacrifices. And what, what about those who, who've been, for example, they've been in the sport, they haven't really had much success what, how do you encourage them to keep on move, to keep on trying, to keep on, to keep on moving forward, to keep on not stop, not give up? How do you encourage yeah. them that you know, hey, you had some setbacks, but you can still move forward? How do you tell them yeah. that? How do you, how do you? Well, obstacles come your way. Even me, I encountered the obstacles, but I, I'm 133, and I must have lost the same number, um, I'd say that um, keep on trying. And for every setback, you see what lessons you have learned and make that your strength and um, work on whatever you think is your weak point. And most importantly, don't lose hope and prayers help. Prayers help. So, Paeng, thank you very much for, for joining us this afternoon. And, uh, My pleasure, Goyo. Maybe you have a, some parting words to, to the guys who are listening, maybe some advice you want to give in life in general. To all the listeners of our interview with Goyo, thank you very much for all your support and um, get into sports. If it's cycling, just love it, enjoy it, and um, whatever sport you choose, practice hard, and um, give all your best and um, just enjoy it. Have fun. Thank, thank you me. very much. With that, thank you very much, Paeng, and uh, hope to see you on the trail soon after the quarantine. After the quarantine, I'll see you on the trails. Thank you again and have a good yes. afternoon. Keep thank, safe, everyone. Thank you, Keep safe, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Keep safe, everyone. Stay healthy. Wear your masks. Thank you.